I think my liver by the end of this um, eight weeks is going to look like Quacha Smith's nose, which is not a pretty <laughs> sight. But, guys, I'm a massive fan. I've always been. I can't wait to watch this rugby. <laughs> Welcome to the Box um, Office Podcast. This Blockbuster Podcast is going to be dedicated to everything South African. The views, news, opinions, the latest news, thoughts on games, and everything that's going to be happening in the next two months. I'm your host, Hanyani Shimanga, and with me I've got two legends of the game, two World Cup winners, Hall of Fame inductees. I think I've got to mention that also, <laughs> Jean de Villiers <laughs> and Skalp Berger. Welcome to Marseille, gentlemen. Thank you, Shimmy. Uh, beautiful setting. You know, we left we left Cape Town with a bit of rain and cold. Uh, Aravia and Marseille, beautiful setting, beautiful weather, and a bit of rugby to talk about, right? Toulon, but you guys are staying down the road in Toulon. Scala, yep. your first day, how was it? No, a successful first day. I think we uh, we got our average beer count up. We uh, got into the local rosé. Uh, we discussed a lot of things, not a lot of rugby. Um, First time I had a nice social event in Toulon. Eh? We played there back in the day with uh, Saracens down at the Stud Mail. Awesome little cauldron. Uh, but how beautiful is this co- coastline? It's an hour down the road. I'm no weatherman, but it's definitely not raining today. Great weather. Like, uh, let's talk Springboks now. Victory against Wales. A thumping against uh, New Zealand last week at, at, at Twickenham. South African fans back home. What, what are they thinking? What are they saying? Well, I don't think it's only back home. But like, I'm so surprised that the, everyone going off with the 7-1 split we had you know, against New Zealand. It's not often we get the opportunity to smash New Zealand 35 points to 7. You know, what a great preamble to this World Cup. We certainly got everyone talking. Um, the nuke squad instead of the bomb squad. Um, and we, are, we, as per usual, announced our team a bit earlier this week. So we've gone 6-2 split you know, to keep everyone happy. Um, but yeah, the box is in a good place. And we all know like, when the box are winning, you know, we're in a comfortable position. It's a nice, it's a nice environment to prep for a World Cup. You know, certain World Cups, John, we we approach where we on the back of a few losses. The box changing room is always an uncomfortable place when you lose. So you know, all of a sudden, from having our doubts about our build-up after the Mount Smart loss against the All Blacks, uh, we're sitting here quietly confident. John, seven-one split. I mean, it, it's been talked about, mentioned. A lot of people talk about South Africans' tough physical. Smart though, it's, it's never it's never you know mentioned in terms of South African rugby scholar. I mean, this is something it was innovative, it worked well. Are we outsmarting the rest of the world? Look, I think um, you know the seven one split. It, it's obviously a risky tactic to have. Um, you know, they they went with it with with the idea of being able to blow away the opposition uh, from a from a forwards perspective, and I, and I don't think it could have worked out any better. Um, obviously, with the yellow cards and then the red card eventually as well, and then suddenly you bring you bring on um, you know seven fresh forwards, and uh, <laughs> then you just need to go about it again. 100%. I mean, there's a reason I never played it's as a red forward. Footage, the <laughs> uncles, okay. yeah. you know. So, so like it, it worked perfectly. And look, you have the laws of the game, you have the framework as um, as set out by World Rugby, and then you need to function within that framework. And find a way how you can outsmart and outplay the opposition. However you do that, that's your prerogative. So, um, you know, you know, I think, I think it it, it worked brilliantly um, for the box. Um, if we had lost, though, uh, no, if well, we had well, lost, w- would seven one be an issue? Well, uh, that's the risk you take, right? Yeah. So it could so easily you you get you get an injury or a couple of injuries in the first couple of minutes to your backline players, and, and suddenly it's a totally t- d- different ball game and the conversation post game would be far different yeah. as well so it's the risk high risk high reward and it's certainly yeah, they you, got the you'll reward you'll have to then end up in a situation where Quaker Smith is playing, playing center, wing playing or center on the wing which is not ideal also like in that I don't think it was the you know the intention from the get go Vili LaRue pulled out of the warm up um, but the 7-1 split and the fact that they didn't stagger the replacements, they all came up on once, mm. uh, was quite something to behold. But like in that game, you know, to match our bomb squad before we turn it into a nuke squad, um, you know, the first time that we saw the All Blacks go 6-2 split against us, they did the bomb squad of their own. Unfortunately for them with the, you know, the Barrett two yellows, the red card, you know, that sort of uh, fell by the wayside. Who's impressed you guys up to the league? Wait, 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 Chimmy, I, I want to wait. <laughs> I'm, no, no, I just wanna, I'm asking I wanna, the questions here. <laughs> I want to make I'm one more the, comment. I'm asking the questions I want to make here. one more comment okay. on the 7-1 split, though. You know, some people saying the box are abusing the, the bench. No. I mean, that is a ridiculous statement to make because 
You know, and I was saying, no, that reserves are there for injuries or whatever. So you're, you're telling me every single weekend teams are purely making decisions regarding their bench on injuries. No. But no. now because because the the compilation of your bench changes, now suddenly the uh, you know the the narrative is different. So I must say, yo. But John, I go I go to that. Have we outsmarted the rest of the world? I think with that with that one, you know, um, we tough physical, but no one says Springboks and smart in the same sentence. Have we outsmarted them? No. Talk about the innovation, the six-two split. We went into the last World Cup underdogs. Yep. We managed to turn it around, win. We've, you know, we, we sort of changed the dynamic of what the bench looks like. I think horses for courses uh, in terms of what every game is different, every challenge is different every weekend. So what what do you do to get the upper hand um, uh, on the opposition? I, I don't think we'll ever outsmart the world. It's it's game for game. Um, <laughs> that game is in the past. That's not part of World Cup. Their focus now is in winning this World Cup. Yep. And it's how do you get one over Scotland? Also, our, our strength is our pack. And yeah. hence we'll set up a World Cup squad, you know, 19 forwards, 14 backs. You know, what is weird is that we've got four scrum ups at this World Cup and we've got four outside backs. You know, it's unusual for us. You know, um, also, you know, no Andre Pollard, which is quite a thing. One one dedicated fly-off, then we've got players who can play in multiple positions. But the, the bomb squad originally got brought out that we had the four best locks in the world. You yeah. know, playing Erges Sneijman and, and Franco Master on the bench and you got Lourdes Jager and Eben Esebet. So yeah. that for me was initially when, when the bomb squad got realized and they said, okay, we've got to have these four players in the match day 23. Now, obviously with Lourdes Jager out injured, not yet at the World Cup, we do it with double up on the loose forward, you know. Yeah. So all of a sudden we've got this weekend, we've got Marco Constard and Dwayne Vermeulen on the bench. And, well, and for yeah. us, our strongest suits are pack. So we play Scotland this weekend, and I think the team that we picked, like John said, horses for course, is a team that's going to outmuscle Scots up front. That's the plan. Would the two of you like to like get a room and talk about uh, you know, the beauty <laughs> of the pack <laughs> and forwards, etc.? Because that's I the mean, most important part. <laughs> Come on, guys. Okay, who, who's impressed you leading up to this World Cup, South African player or anyone in world rugby? Who's impressed you the most? Well, no, what's the question? Games. South Africa or world rugby? I mean, you can't. Your choice. I'll give you two. going to do two one questions South in one. Backline player. Okay. And in terms of world rugby, one. I think Caden Moody, very exciting. Yeah. Um, I think what he's done in the last uh, 12 months or so has really been impressive. Every single time a challenge has been thrown his way, he's come out uh, performing. Um, you know, two weekends ago, no different. Playing his first professional game at 13, even though he played there at school. Um, yeah. How do you, you, know, you think he went there at, at uh, You know, so, so firstly, playing, like I said, your first professional game at 13 against the All Blacks. Yeah. You know, that's not a... <laughs> That's not an easy task, okay? They're a world-class team and, and, and very much one of the favourites to win this World Cup. So, you know, the, the way they challenge you on attack um, in the third, uh, at the 13th channel, you know, it's a difficult um, position to defend, especially the way that, that South Africa defends. Um, and I thought he did exceptionally well. Um, he, he probably didn't get challenged in the way that, that you normally get challenged when you play the ABS because we were so dominant. But I mean, 100%, you know, he passed that test. John, on that, in, in the way we defend was up and in and how deep we rush up. And there's no, you know, we used to defend a little bit like that, but we always had like a bit of a shadow, a softer call to get them to the touch and then, you know, live to fight another day. The Fox don't have that. They've got one speed and that's flat out. Do you think it's easier to go from wing to 13 than to move a 12 out to 13? Because 12... It's different, hey, you've got to have the short options and try and swim and look yeah. past to get the catch up. But the 13's got to go. Yeah, look, then sometimes you had players that can play 12, 13 and on the wing. Um, <laughs> well, uh, but, <coughs> I'm talking about, but, uh, like, uh, give us names. I can't think of any at the moment. But, uh, give us names. But it's, yeah, b because we, you know, because we're so hard on the outside and, and you could kind of see it playing at 14 with Kane and Moody, the way that they defend the, his decision making. Um, in that position was really good. So that kind of gave me confidence that he would be able to do the same moving moving in one channel. Um, and he did well. But like I said, it's it's a position that you grow in. You, you get used to seeing certain pictures in front of you and then making decisions. So as a defender, you are one of the main decision makers playing at 13 for the box. And, and, and he did well. Scala, are we favourites for this World Cup? Or... You know, from a mental state, or is it good for us as South Africans to go in as, as potential favourites considering that All Black game and, and what the public are saying? Well, traditional wisdom is the wounded box the most dangerous thing. Yeah. So whenever we go in on underdogs. But in saying that, you know, in a World Cup, you need to deliver for two months. It's not just a once-off game, you know, and it starts with us playing Scotland on Sunday. 
I think we're in a really good space. And I think if you ask any team who they don't want to play, they'll probably say they don't want to play the box. And, and our point of difference is the way we defend. Everything is a, is a fight. We've got a unique style of playing rugby. Um, we have evolved a little bit, like we're playing more rugby. And I think that's more to do with, you know, the players that w has pitched up and is playing for us. You look at our back three, how exciting they are between Damien Willems, Sir Kirtley, Cheslin, Kanan's not involved this, this weekend, but then Flaf is Manu Lebok, whose natural instinct is to take it to the line and, and try and lock defences with his passing game. Um, so <coughs> I wouldn't say we're favourites because the draw is brutal. Yeah. You know, our pool, you know, playing Scotland now, then we've got to beat Ireland. And then our quarterfinal, if we get there, is, is France or New Zealand. And those games are coin flip. You know, France here in a quarterfinal is going to be is going to be a tough tough ask. But so too our last four games against All Blacks. Yes, we've won them, uh, we've beaten them twice comprehensively by 30 points. But also the other two games, yeah. they they smashed us. So uh, I, if you ask me now, if we're our favourites, I'm saying yes, one of them. But our draw definitely doesn't suit us. John, last two World Cups, we go back to history. We've lost the opening game, New Zealand and Japan, and Japan in England. I can't, remember. I, I, I can't remember <laughs> what happened in Brighton, guys. I think Eddie Jones still wants to have all his, um, you know, his, his training camps out there. But uh, what happened again, John? Yeah, John yeah, that wasn't a good day for us. But yeah. again, you know, it um, it's again in the prep. You know, we've been talking a lot about what happened pre pre World Cup, the build up to this World Cup. But at the end of that, it comes down to performing and executing on the day during the World Cup in the big games. Um, you know, certainly the the one in Brighton. You know, Japan did that on the day, and uh, and we we just weren't uh, good enough. Yeah, you know that time around. You know, with a pool, you've still got time to turn it around, hopefully, and but still this, make this, it through. This, yeah, this World Cup, there's no time to turn it around. Well, exactly. Right. I think yeah, that the pool no the pool that we find ourselves in, you know, with Scotland and and Ireland, with Tonga probably having the capability or the ability to to to, to really take a team deep. Um, you know, it makes it difficult. So every single game you need to be at your best. And I think that that's going to be, um, that's going to be throughout the World Cup. You know, it, it, a lot of teams that can be very competitive, that can cause an upset. And a lot of teams, you know, quite a few teams that can actually go all the way and win it. Scotland, they star players. What <coughs> challenge do they present to the box? Well, Finn Russell stands out mm. as a playmaker. And I, I think if anyone can unlock uh, the box defence through taking it to the line, doing something attacking kicking wise we've also seen him come around the corner run it and then kick it to the winger because there's always that space and, and everyone tries to access this space but we defend the ball so you can't string three passes together with us so the playmaker will have to make a call early and hard whether it's a big pass whether it's little attacking kicks whether it's the cross kick the issue for scotland though is like our strongest suit our pack is up against their weaker suit, which is their, their pack so of the, the contrasting styles there. So it's a contrast in styles. Also, we're unique in the way we defend. Um, and they've got a lot of second-man players with Finn going out the back, and then they run use their, their two South African wingers. Um, very, very, sounds very Scottish, uh, Van der and Stein, to run off his shoulder. So he's got that release valve out there. But we've also seen if you don't get gain line against the box, it's very hard to do that. Um, so for me, the, the standout feature for them is Finn Russell. It's where, where, where do they get gain line from? Where, where would Scotland get? You, you talk about gain line, the physicality. That's just a, that's rugby 101. You need that to yeah. win rugby. Where, where do Scotland get gain line from? Look, I, I think it's, it's more than that. I think they get, they get momentum um, through Finn Russell and his decision making. So it's going to be the challenge between, um, you know, him, him making the right decisions and executing versus the box defensive system yeah. uh, because that is forcing the opposition and the attacking team to make decisions quicker and forcing them then uh, eventually into mistakes. So whoever wins that battle, um, you know, I think com comes out on top. You know, I already mentioned, I just yeah. think our, you know, our pack and the physicality that we'll be able to bring to this game is something that, that they need to yeah. find uh, a a um, yeah. Are, are they are they going to stop Sean, that? Okay, you know? let me put it this way: You, Gregor Townsend, yes, build up to this week. What do you say to the Scottish team? Scott's got similar hair to Craig Gregor Townsend. Yeah, so you, you, put yourself in like, Gregor Townsend's shoes. I don't know if Gregor ever had hair like I did. <laughs> like he's, he's, we definitely got the same hairstylist at the moment. What, I got on a number one say? and a half, what, by the way. What, what do you say? What, what do you say to the Scottish uh, team? So it, starts up, it starts up front. So you've got to somehow get parity. Yeah. 
in set piece. Um, and if I look at the way they, they're going to battle to attack off scrums, because they won't have a stable base, so you have a channel one, you just get away from that scrum on your ball. Obviously on the box ball, it's a different story. But like I think launch off lineouts is critical for them. How do they get over the gain line? There's always in modern day rugby where they hold the 10 a little bit longer in and around the lineout. There's soft shoulders to be had and easy eyes to get up front. Um, in general play, I think if you're running off number nine, you don't want to ever get into a situation with a box where you give them two wide rucks to go at you. Yeah. So play till the 15, so there's a defined edge, and then you look for soft shoulders, maybe inside balls, closer to the pillar. Because we've seen in past where teams do get yards against us because we set up quite wide, as in between one, two, and three, with little inside balls, um, you know, little intricate plays around there. But then still, it stops with your most important player, and that's Finn Russell. Uh, and, and it's the variety. I think it's the variety. If they, yeah. uh, and that's, that, that's what yeah. they'll try to do, is bring variety yeah. to their attack so that you, also, you start doubting your, Philip your defense. Philip said yeah. in the media, send your second string players to play South Africa. Whatever happens, you're going to lose anyway. And try win the rest of the games. I'd love it if they do that. Yeah, <laughs> it will make it easier. This is what he got. This is, I'm, I'm quoting Philip St. Andre. He said, yeah. no, forget about this game. Whatever happens, you're going to lose. Send your second stringers. Beat Tonga, wow. beat Romania, beat <coughs> Ireland, and then you've got a uh, chance. Well, a punch put, chance of making it, it through. Say, say, for example, the box, they've been talking this game up as the, the knockout game. It's an important game for us. We get through this one, say we get the four points, or even if we do get a bonus point, how much pressure does that put on Ireland? To make the to make the quarterfinal potentially they've got to go and beat Scotland and South Africa, um, so I think it's a it's a critical game for us. But for Scotland, I think kicking attacking kicks yep. is where they've got to exploit, and you know they can work against you. Um, but like if one or two of them bounce bounces, you take out line speed out of the box defence because you have to have a look at the kick first. And Finn is the one player that can. Not make a guy running to the line or just pop it over the top. But the, but to the, the big matchups. Okay, let's let's talk about the big matchups then. What are the big matchups? Where are the big matchups going to be? I, I, I think maybe um, you know obviously with a with a uh, well the Scottish team's not out yet as we speak, but uh, with a oh, okay. with a four South African wings <laughs> on the park. <laughs> and uh, um, you know obviously contrasting styles again. A Duan van der uh, length, strength, um, all of that versus. Yeah. You know, a, a Chisel and a, and a Kurt Lee. Um, so, so the challenge there in the air at times, um, you know, and just the the physicality, you know, on the on the edges. Um, but I, I think throughout these two teams, um, the box probably <clears throat> they've got the edge from a physical point of view, from a set face point of view. Okay. So, so yes, there will be a challenge. Give me names. No, there's a there's a challenge. Tell me the centers, Hugh Jones and <laughs> JC Creel, whatever it is, matchups. Le, can, I can I get can there? I get can there? I get names? Can I get names? Or or do you want to <laughs> ask the question <laughs> and then answer it? So Give me names. Again, set phases. Via Pinel and Pierce Kuman. Yeah. Okay. I was talking about forwards. Kind yes. Of impressive. Okay. Because as we mentioned, so so much starts there, and and basically everything starts there. I think Hugh Jones is a brilliant player for for Scotland. Yeah. You know, with that Finn Russell and his attacking ability, I think you has that ability as well, and he can really rip a game open. So, um, so JC and 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 you, that'll be a matchup that'll be a good one. Um, Tui Piloto and and Dialenda in the you know in the midfield, same thing, um, kind of similar. Um, they will be the ones that give go for it. You know, do you allow that or not on either side as well? So. It's test match rugby. It's World Cup rugby. There's ma throughout there will be matchups. It's, it's being able so to get the upper hand so in JC, your team. Just, sorry, just JC Creel, his resurgence. Impressed with what he's done the last. I mean, he, Luke on your arm was the name when you know everyone spoke yeah. about probably the last four years. And JC Creel has just stood behind the shadow the whole time. He's been there, been out, now back in the mix there. Your, your, you know, <coughs> your thoughts. His you um. You know, he's a hard worker, JC. So he, he always puts in uh, the time in terms of analysis, the work in, in terms of training, you know, fantastic work ethic. And and he's never been, you know, he's always been there and thereabouts. And when he got the opportunities, you know, JC's solid. So he'll he'll be a good decision maker on defense. Um, you know, he probably doesn't have the X factor that a Lucanio um, or a Kanan playing at 13 yeah. would have. 
but you know it'll be a low error rate um yeah. it'll give you go forward uh, and that's what you want from yeah. jet so you know what you're going to get and as a combination you know they've played a lot he's of rugby looked, together he's sharp this year whenever he's played like mm. he's he's looked amazing for a guy who you know doesn't play week in week out for the box so it's always hard when you do get to opportunity so i'm glad for jesse Guys that you've got a feel for is probably a guy like Andre Esterhuizen, yeah. who I think has had his best season so far in a, in a Springbok jumper. We all know what Damien the Allen can do for us. Opportunity also, yeah. And also it's the way we play. You know, I, I think he, he comes at Harlequins is where he's really found his niche and he plays next to Marcus Smith, who's attacking Flaff and you know, stays on top of the ball and he can pick a line off off that shoulder. Mm. Um, where where maybe in the past Andre, especially in the in the in the box setup, hasn't been going to the line as much. So he's yeah. basically getting static ball and you you rely on him to generate it. With Marnie LeBoc, we know he wants to play. That's his default. So for me a matchup on this weekend, Marnie versus um, yeah. Finn Russell is a good one. Um, but Andre Este is in running off that shoulder uh, against New Zealand at Twickenham he was amazing. And then for me the big issue for Scotland is gonna be there's got to be a, a forward ball carrier. I don't know who he's going to be, but he's got to put his hand up and be a willing carrier for 80 minutes. And he's going to lose some battles because he's going to get smashed by the box pack. But we need someone to get over the game line against the box, run on soft shoulders if there is any. And it's same with that player. If he's got a little bit of a playmaking skill and bring variety into the game, all of a sudden you can change the contact point a bit. But yeah, we've seen in the past that that's what teams battle with when the box on top of form is who's carrying through the brick wall. Yes, Kuman's cool. yeah. cool been good. Yeah. Uh, with that, you know, when he's, he's carry, carrying well, yeah, he's got some soft skills. There also, the, the yeah. eight, he's, he, he can carry yeah. a bit. 2007 Scala, big matchup was you and Tui Langi. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> cheese. <geez, laughs> <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. But like, I remember, like, we, we also, like, similar to this side, you know, we, we, Jack Free was running, he's a joker, so he was running around and he was going, like, listen, boys, I just saw the biggest filler I've ever <laughs> seen in my life and pre game. And he says, like, and there's one of these two Alangi brothers. So now we're going through the match day program, and he's going, like, look at this. That weighs 140, and he's, he's six foot two or whatever. So now World Cup opening game, um, and we're walking out side by side. You know, the dramatic music goes on. And Victor's standing. We, we line up one to, you know, one to 22 at the time, and they're all, you know, scattered in their numbers. And Victor taps me. He goes, hey, he's not that big. And I look to the left and I go, Vic, well, that's the winger. That's, that's Alessandra. Alex 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 <laughs> <laughs> so Vic, Vic gets panicked and he starts, we're looking around. Now we're looking for Henry. And I didn't see him for the first five minutes, but the next moment we're lining up from a five yard, uh, on, a li on a line out, like on the 10 yard. And I just look ahead and he's probably in the middle of the 22 and he was like the line out trigger. And I look at this and I've never seen someone that's like as wide as he's tall. And we used to line up wide, but Bush James is probably. 20 meters from me so there's a massive hole in between me and butchie and butchie i'm going like okay butchie he goes i don't have him <laughs> henry, Scala, henry, henry, eight yours henry, eight, eight is yours, yours. Henry's, henry's yours and butchie turns his shoulders out like this so I'm like, <laughs> but it's also like that play oh so the hooker the hooker throws it in at the in, in the line out and then henry starts running yeah okay so he kind of lines up on the 22 he starts running Lock, so, lock to nine, nine to ten, and Henry's there. So now Henry's coming, yes, and I'm, I'm going like, okay, uh, listen, no. here, he's coming at me. So like, I sort of get a nice little angle, so I go <laughs> wide, and I like hit him a little bit from the side. But like, I get quite a nice little hit. So obviously, I lose the hit, and I look down, and there's Donnie. poor Donny Rousseau <laughs> he's sitting, he's sitting on his knees, wanting to do a leg chop. Yeah. We get pummeled. I basically surfed him for which felt like 15 meters, and then did one of these, yeah, leg in between the, the his legs. I mean, was, I, that, was that 20 minutes probably the most physically been involved in? Yeah, it, was first 20, 30 it, minutes. it was just frantic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we were up for it. At the end, we, we beat them by 60 points, but yeah. we were having a few beers afterwards uh, in, our, in, our, in our hotel room. And Austin Runt was sitting there and he says, Listen, he's, he's never been scared on the rugby field, but if someone asked him if he was scared in that first 20, he would have put his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how scary it was. Yeah. Sean, just you, you go back there, you know. Looking good on that. I wasn't sharing that, beers with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 were, you were obviously, yeah. your World Cup started and ended then. Um, obviously a sad we, moment. We've got to be careful. It's World Cup here. Yeah. He might get yeah, injured yeah, getting He's not injured here, yet. You know, he's lasted yeah. a day in France. So he's, he's doing well. But Springboks, injuries do happen. Yeah. Who can the Springboks afford not to get injured this World Cup? <laughs> Two or three names that you say, listen, we cannot do without. I think... Um, I think you go Malcolm Marks. Yeah, I would agree. Probably yeah. right, right at the top. I think he's been so impressive and so influential. And yes, Bongi's there, and, and, and Bongi's a fantastic player as well. But I think I think kind of Malcolm 
has just made that step up where there's a, a little bit of a gap uh, at this stage between the two of them. Um, you know, then I look at I look at our locks. I, I think the impact that Arches Neyman has made, you know, even though he comes yeah. off the bench, you know, th that's just a dynamic that I think we haven't had for this period that that he's been injured. Um, you know, it, it's difficult to say that we we won't be able to do it without him, but I think he's a he's a big player, and you know, I'll throw Dwayne Vermeulen in as well. I just think you know, even though he's not starting this weekend, I, I think what yeah, uh, what Dwayne brings to to that environment and and kind of the resurgence as well, you know, go back 12 months, he probably would have said, "Oh, Dwayne's going to struggle to well, not struggle, but it's a, he's in a bit of a fight to make the squad." You know, suddenly with the opportunities he's had, he's just shown, well, he, he's still he's still up for it, and um, and he can contribute big time. So, um, yeah, I know three forwards that I mentioned now, but. Yeah, I'll put I'll put uh, I'll put Damon Willems in there. Yeah, for the balance he provides. Yeah. He's getting a start now because he's been so effective the last two games. He was absolutely magnificent at fullback, and Willie's been playing really well. You know, yeah. Willie's you know his touches on attack has been amazing. You know, the amount of try assists whenever there is a pass to be had. Yeah. you know, Willie is the one who's who's strung that final pass together, and it's impressive when he he steps up to play ten. But Damon Willems, uh, whether he's on the bench or starting cover so much for us, yeah. that he's, I, thi I think it's, it's really, he, he yeah. balances, he's almost like the all round in cricket, he balances your side. And then up front, um, I think, you know, the guy that's been super, we were all looking at, like, the turnaround from his long term injury, Sia, has looked really strong. Um, yeah. But it's for him, I think it's managing, you know, everything that moves around the box team. And also with him there, the perception of the box mm. is quite a good one. Without him, I think, you know, we're lacking in, you know, having a proper captain settling everything down um, and I would also put up Ivan Etzebeth yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I think with Luit out we can't we can afford to lose one of the two we can't lose both the um yeah the, I mean Ivan Ivan also I think his consistency also for the box is, is huge yeah. eh? his work rate when he's playing but also he um you know he, he performs week in and week out and he's kind of he, he brings that that physical edge i'm gonna throw one more name in there because yeah, he's yeah. my favorite because he's my favorite he's my favorite <laughs> okay. springbok france Malabre. france Malabre. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there we go yeah, i think the big man yeah, yeah. The, well, the big what, man. what he like has done more. yeah what yeah. what he has done and and just the character i mean he's he's a superstar he just gets on with it doesn't he yeah no, he, I mean, he also, no he also starred in the modern family as Cam. Yeah. I mean, he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Predictions for this weekend? Just like for Sport. life or the world okay, or, start, or okay, game we'll, we'll, specific? Or? Opening game? Mm. New Zealand-France. Wow, la, 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 la. Um, hell of a game. Ooh. Hell of an opener. I don't think yeah. I don't think we've had such a blockbuster opening Prediction game. Prediction for the game? Can, <laughs> Jimmy, don't start there. Okay. <laughs> Prediction for the game. I'm gonna go New Zealand because no Dante, no uh, by no Intermac. I'm gonna go New Zealand. It's, it's 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 so hard. I mean, maybe history repeats itself. I remember in uh, in 07 we went to watch the opening game and Argentina beat uh, France, which meant they had to play their quarterfinal away yeah. uh, at at Cardiff. Um, I would have to agree with John. I'm going New Zealand. You England don't. You don't Argentina. Do you not give a England opinion? Argentina. You only ask the questions. I'm asking the questions. England okay. Argentina. England Argentina. I am going to go Argentina. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree there. Same Eng yeah. England's just in disarray. Like everything, you know, injuries, prep. I, I, I oh, think if you've got there. a really strong pack against this current Argentina side, you can sort of put them in a box. Yeah. And make them play in an uncomfortable area for them. Um, you can go set piece to set piece. Um, Unfortunately, England just don't, they don't have that pack. So they've almost got to play around their own scrum. Their line is decent. Their maul is okay. Sinclair's so they, injured. Sinclair's oh. injured. But they're forced to play rugby. And unfortunately, at the but moment. They don't want to, though. The, yeah, this side doesn't too look like. Yeah. yeah, they're too restricted to really play rugby. Also, for me, a lot goes around their team selection now with, with Faz and, and Vinopola out. He's their big ball carrier, the one's the big playmaker. You know, okay. their centers they've played so far has, has been mm. a bit of a. Uh, like. Wales, Fiji? Mix. Fiji. I'd say I'll, Fiji. I'll, I'll go for Wales, but if high it, scoring game, only just. If you go outside a team that can that can upset this World Cup, I think Fiji is the team that, that comes to mind. 
and Ansema. Tonga. But, and Fiji, Fiji's history playing well is in World Cups. Yeah, it's what pretty awesome. impressive. Yeah, the, the Pacific Island teams, uh, Tonga, you don't want to play a fresh Tonga team. No. Because you're going to get hurt. There's going to be some bodies there. Yeah. Th- that's probably also, the, the build up to the World Cup. You look at some of the results there. I yeah. mean, Fiji beating England. Who would have thought? Yeah. Or maybe I must change. I'll go away from where I was. Let me go Fiji. <laughs> no, no, not allowed to change. I'm not allowed no, to change. No, no, I just no remembered back in 2007, <laughs> I remember Jake White gave us like a whole task to do on Wales. And like halfway through this, I was like, Jake, I mean, what happens? Why am I doing this task if Fiji. Fiji might beat them. Yeah. He's like, there was no chance. Anyway, <laughs> Fiji beat them you and we played them happened. in the quarterfinal. And yeah, they gave us a good run for our money for 60 minutes. The pressure of World Cups, how big is it? I mean, you I, guys, I, you know, two World Cup winners. Yeah. That pressure, uh, you know, can you describe it? How do you feel that pressure or how do you uh, even handle it? I guess the pressure cooker situation. Um, and like you try and, the way you handle it is by trying to be it, keep it as normal as possible. Um, like have your friends, have your families, go out for your normal, your, your dinner nights out. You know, preparation is key for the game. So you've got to prep well, but you prep well for every single test match. Mm. The only difference is that this is a knockout competition. And often you get through the pool stages and then you get into your first playoff game as the quarterfinal. And that really amplifies the pressure because yeah. it's, it's the media, it's everything around it. It's your phone. You know, you're getting so many more messages than you would get in a normal game and then there's the pressure that if you lose you're out when you get through that quarterfinal then obviously you go okay now we get into a semi uh, but like you yeah for me it is added and it's it's shown in our performances you know it, it statistically the ga- the ball and play is higher at a world cup we as players run further at a world cup than yeah. you do in every game and and everyone tries harder um so yeah it's definitely a i think the, yeah, situation. you know sticking Sticking to the old cliche of sticking to the processes, uh, you know, in, in what you do. Um, you know, it's the same during a World Cup because pressure will always be there. You know, let's say when when you put on the Springbok jersey, the pressure is always there every yeah. single time you put it on. So it gets amplified when you when you obviously at a World Cup because because the expectation is so much more. But if you if you continue to do and 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 it's again saying what, what Skulk's already said, you know, sticking to those processes and making sure that you actually Take time off away from the game as well, because you you just get you get bombarded yeah. with information and and about the game all the time. So on your off day, get away, go play golf, do whatever to take your mind a little bit away from it because your 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 it, it drains you. You know your mind drains you. We won you. it in, in 2007. I think all of us felt the same emotion straight after you, you the the final whistle went. Is this relief? Relief. Yeah. Yeah. Is the fact that okay, it's off my back now. Now I can actually just crack on with it we, we managed to get it over the line um and it's exactly it's eight weeks or it was seven weeks in our time of just constant pressure media people and the, the better you do the bigger the situation gets yeah. so you know what our what our box side has got this year is a lot of experience in world cups a lot of them are at their third world cup um and, most, most and, and that's a good yeah. thing for us most, most experience yeah, yeah. Uh, age-wise yeah a- Age-wise, the the oldest squad. Yeah, average age twenty eight, I think. Kind of like you you mentioned it earlier. Also, as much as experience, this Bok team has evolved. Yeah, it has changed. You know, you, you look at probably a more attacking mindset, which John you'd probably enjoy a bit more. The, the, but there has been a change there. That excites me. Is that I, I don't think we've gone and and uh, devalued or, or brought our the foundation of our game down. Yeah. You know, set phases still. We are extremely strong in terms of set phases. That'll be the foundation of of Springbok Greg before probably forever okay but we've been able to add to that you know so you still have that but now you're adding x-factor players that can really score tries from anywhere and there's there's a mind shift in terms of when it's on whether that's in your own 22 or in the op- opposition 22 you've got the skill set and the yeah. ability to see the space and get the ball into that space um you know and that that's been the change for uh for me in that we were extremely one-dimensional for a long time and yeah. we we're bloody good at that but now we we can go that route, but we've got the ability to play a more expansive game as well. And with a guy like Marnie, who who is just you know it, it just happens uh, that he when he He's sees a, he space see it, yeah. he, 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 he sees it quickly the and then he executes on it. So it um you know I like that variety that that we've brought to yeah, our game. John touched on this personnel driven too. You yeah, know, we've got so many instinctive players now <clears throat> that you can't box them in. I think they'll be way worse when they're boxed in. I think that, that this transition into a bit more of an expansive style of play has come at a cost at our kicking game, contestable kicking game. 
And you've got to take time out somewhere to become a better attacking side. And also, I think in, in 2019, we know that if we scored, I don't know, 18 points per game, we're probably defense is good enough to get a result. Yeah. Modern rugby now, you've got to score 30-odd points. That's where the game's heading. So I, I think Russia and his team realized the way we were playing, we could never get to 30 points. Where now, with us giving ourselves opportunities, kicking to touch more, not going for goal, you know, building that pressure in the opposition 22, we get a lot of results out of it. Skala, you spoke about building the pressure. Against New Zealand at Twickenham, we kicked for the corner a lot, mm. didn't take the points on board. Sunday... Do you think they keep the same strategy, or you take what's on offer? I, th I think if you if you kick a, it's a it's a ninety five percent kick. You give it to him. Yeah. Because there's something about a World Cup and scoreboard pressure, and we've all played games where we played really well in the World Cup. We end up losing it, but there was no scoreboard pressure ever. But yeah. if it's not a ninety five percent kick, we we put them in the box. We put it in twenty two, and we 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 ask them certain questions, like we did the All Blacks at Twickenham. And with the modern day game, how it's getting officiated, you're going to get on a team warning soon. You're going to go a number down. And as soon as you go a number down, it's bloody hard to compete. Okay, some quick fire questions for you guys. John, if you put your boots on, you're playing this weekend. No, I'll get which, injured. Which centre <laughs> wouldn't you want to play against in World Rugby? Which centre at this World Cup wouldn't you want to play against? Oh, jeepers. Scala, the same for you for forwards. Stop yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. about it. No, well, that's that's a stupid question. No, it isn't. It's a great question. You don't who play international rugby and they say, oh, no, I don't want to play no, against him this weekend. Well, if you played wing in 95, <laughs> I'm telling you what, the one answer would be Jonah. <laughs> yeah, <well, laughs> no, you want to <laughs> test yourself <laughs> against him. Who would be? Okay. You know, humble yourself, put your ego down, you can no, show I'm vulnerability, you can be scared. Who wouldn't you want to play against? Who would give you the most trouble, John? Lost four um, words for one, sir. I'm trying to... Th Come to me. No, no, no. You took it. Okay. No, no, man. You I'm trying it. to think who... He's trying, he's trying to think of all the positions you played. No. And then, then figure it out. No, who will you guys... Who, who, who give points? you a long day? Oh, most of them. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. <laughs> all of them. That's a totally so, different so, so question. No names. Totally there's different no names. question. It's too good. That's a it's totally different question. Okay. Um, my, my is still... Oh, but he's not at the World Cup. Um, <laughs> look, Fico's been good for... Uh, for France, um, Bandiaki. We'll go Bandiaki. Bandiaki. Scala? Luckily, Henry's retired. So <laughs> uh, if, if Henry was still running around, I would, there's no ways I'm going to play against him again. Um, but I'll have to go. Um, he's not playing for the box this weekend, but like a guy like Dion Free. Yeah, I mean, this is hunting breakdowns. And like, I'll have to go clean that, which <laughs> is not a vibe at all. Um, who else is, um, there's some messy oaks, but like, I think also, like, you come up against some of these Polynesian sides. Yeah. They've got some big ball carriers, and you've got to front up against them. Uh, but I didn't like cleaning breakdowns. Breakdowns. Really I'm going to change. Three. Can I change my, yeah, can, yes, yeah, yeah. because I've, you know, now I'm that nice you gave guy, me yeah. time to actually think of all the players. Okay. Semi Rod Rodra. Yeah. Fantastic Dangerous. rugby player. Dangerous. Dangerous on all levels. I, I think unbelievable. Great rugby player. Great addition to Rugby Union over the last number of years after his, uh, his league stint. Um, and, and just the rise of, of, uh, of, these, uh, um, of these teams, island teams, it's been fantastic. But you, you talk about these guys. Like the, I mean, obviously, the better they are. So, like, when we, in our days, you played against McCaw, you put, played against George Smith. That's the ones that you wanted to play. Or yeah. Jerry Collins was running around trying to rip my head off. You know, like, uh, that's the games that you're up for. And you want to return the favor to them. But like sometimes, like that Henry situation, you come up against <laughs> a force that's just that you didn't expect it. You've never seen something like that in your life before. When when, when I was at uh, at Munster, we were playing playing Heineken Cup and and Perpignan and Northampton. They were in the in our same pool, and and Henry was at at Perpignan then, and they played Northampton. And what was his name? Ben, was it Ben Foden, the fullback yeah, yeah, that yeah. played for England and and for yes, Northampton? And Henry, <laughs> Henry tackled. Ben Foden, but I think he almost killed him. So you know, you know when you see those stats, so he was running and then he kicked, okay? And and Henry had like a, a bit of a, a a run as well. Foden kicked and Henry was just just in time, okay? But it's one of those where he like tackled him out the, the screen. Out the screen. Okay, there goes your TV screen. Okay, and then the cameraman needs to come back. Yeah, I think it's on YouTube still. That guy was yeah. Well, all the two Luggy brothers.
You can throw Manu in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Too, too it's awkward to tackle Manu, eh? It's kind of tackling the red cards. Mm. It's not something we really want to spend time talking about, but it's going to happen. Let's talk it's if, gonna happen. if they applied these rules that they have today to when no, we no. were playing. <laughs> how many red cards? I wouldn't last. <laughs> Would Butcher play? There's, there's also there, you know, no mitigation. <laughs> Butcher, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the officiating is, unfortunately, that uh, it's something that we've got to cover. Yeah. And it's something I think that scares all of us because um, no one likes a bad decision or a decision or a referee having a big outcome on, on the game or where the game is going. The bunker system, I think, is improvement over the straight red and then trying yeah. to find mitigation. Um, but, you know, it rule is still there that the player, you know, if it's head contact, it's, it's still a red. Um, and we've seen so many games being influenced by that. You know, we saw that, that Twickenham game. It was a great performance by us, but when, as, as soon as we went down to uh, 14 men with Peter Steff's yellow card, which is harsh, but th this is the way the game is getting officiated, we were buying time. Yeah. So there's, there's like a 15-minute lull in the game because we were going, let's get back to full numbers, and we play 15 versus yeah. 14. And, and that's unfortunately where this World Cup's going to go. And yeah. often they happen quite yeah. early on. Yeah. And you have to go 60 or 70 minutes you know, with, with a red card. Um, yeah. Well, for me, like, I but think, do, do I think teams the yellow that, card entry, entry is fair. And it's so hard for me if the, if it's if it's foul play, yeah. like if it's it, then it's then, no, then go, yeah. then you go. But yeah. if it's like adjusting tackler, like Peter Steff, and he just cl he wants to wrap uh, Sam Kane, but he clips him with his shoulder, sort of top of his arm against the head, he gets a yellow card. That was a red. Luckily, the bunker system just kept it on a yellow, which it should have been. For me, it's just unfortunate, you know. Mm. So I, I just think we we've gone too hard on the red card, and the game suffered. I've I've got no doubt that at this World Cup, a couple of those decision will decisions will determine the outcome of a game, and that's unfortunately the environment that that we're functioning within. And I don't think it's a personnel thing as well. Yeah. It's not the the referees as such. It's just the way that that they are bringing safety into the game, but also the way that is being applied at the moment. And I think the 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 difficult thing for us. Um, as as viewers and being part of the game is understanding it, yeah. you know, and and just the you know where we one day it's it's a, it's exactly a penalty and here. then all the way to a two week ban kind of thing, so you know, for the, the three same of us do games thing. together often, yeah. and an incident yeah. will happen, and none of us are ever aligned. Yeah. So you'll go red card, I'll go yellow card, and you would go penalty only. It's so difficult. So it's so yeah. hard for all of us who's fans of the game, who work on the game, to actually know. It's it's a different story if something happens and we all go, okay, that's a straight yellow. Well, that's how it should yeah. be. I think but this is, isn't that the, the biggest fright, Scala, that come World Cup final, there's a high shot in the first minute? Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be a red card. Yeah. That, that, I think that's, that's what scares me the most, that, you know, a beautiful spectacle, a build-up of four years. Yeah could end up, you know, something could happen like that in the first couple of minutes. Well, the World Cup final is in uh, eight weeks' time. I don't think they're going to change it before <laughs> then. Exactly. Okay? So yeah. it, it, it is what it is, and let's yeah. hope it, it it doesn't happen because it would be unfortunate if something like that eventually determines an outcome of a game that could be critical to who eventually and, ends up in the, the in the, the final. The is going to be a tackle area. It's, it's a breakdown. 100%, yeah. And it's a real contest. Yeah. And and those, those are the three where World Rugby's basically asked the players yeah. – to change everything, yeah. all the habits, change, tackle differently, um, yep. contest the air differently. And it has changed the behavior the of the players. The so players have become better. But, but that's why, that's but why still, I like the, I am the bunker. Not in, I'm not in control of where the ball carrier is going to go or fall. Because there's so many variables. There's like, so many it just variables moves this way or that way. Or the yeah. same can Peter Steff one where he gets hit from the side. Or Damien Willems' yeah. yellow card against Wales where... Uh, was it Jasper Visser tackled yeah. him from behind yeah. and he, he shifted and all but of a sudden it's that's why I like their bunker system in that you slow it down there's not a lot of emotion involved because those guys are sitting wherever they yeah. can use technology so at least you're using whatever is available to you to eventually make the correct decision we've also gone away from home producers where they will show no, us on television what clips you're getting yeah. So, for example, if there's a for forward pass like the one uh, we had against Ireland with Johnny Sexton, it never got picked up. But then the replay straight after they awarded it, then the forward pass actually gets shown. So, but, uh, Yeah, you, you talk about, Scala, the, the home ground advantage, and a lot of people don't realize. You've got a team with line speed. 
a knowledgeable crowd will start booing every time yes. because now the, the AR starts thinking, are these guys off sides or not? Are they creeping? The whole time, eventually, are they creeping? Are they creeping? Yeah. And that's the difference. I mean, we Velodrome last year when France played the Springboks. Yeah. It was probably the loudest mm. crowd we've ever experienced. But, but we had, a, <laughs> you, you, you had a, yeah, audio and a visual yeah. blackout. Yeah. yeah. And they awarded the try, obviously. Exactly. So it's a good yeah. thing that it will be independent. Looking ahead, obviously. Oh, please explain to eight, me. Eight weeks. Independent eight, broadcast. Eight, 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 <laughs> eight, eight weeks. Eight weeks. What are you looking forward to the most? Or, you know, I'm looking forward to when my family comes to visit and joins us on the <laughs> yeah. trip. That'll be. Uh, that's are you already? That's something. Are you home sick already? Twenty-four hours. You're home sick already. Twenty-eight yeah. hours. You're home sick already. Box office. It's a nice it's name for this. It's a nice name for this. Like it. Yeah. Did you think of it? Yeah. Um. I'm looking forward to the opening game. I think massive game, New Zealand, um, New Zealand, France, uh, New Zealand, France. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so many, so many bigger. It, it, it's going to be such a competitive World Cup. I think it's you know if you go back to two thousand and seven when when France um, hosted the, the the last World Cup, it was a it was a great experience, fan experience. You know, I could experience it. For two weeks as a player, and then for five weeks as a, <laughs> as a fan, a well, you bet. A supporter, um, you know, it's be it's beautiful. The the venues that they'll be playing at, um, the competitiveness of the teams, uh, and everything that goes with it, I think it's going to be amazing. It's a World Cup, okay, and and all of us have memories of every single World <coughs> Cup that we've ever watched, and you know, we were fortunate to make a career out of out of rugby, and now we're in the broadcasting space. But we're all just massive fans, mm. and it doesn't get better than a World Cup. Every single game of the World Cup, I'm going to watch. Some of them I'm going to watch in person. Some of them on TV. Some of them in a pub. But the nice thing for us, and we just bumped into some old players before this podcast started. You know, it's 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 almost like a reunion of all of the years and all the players of has been before all the has been. <laughs> Still think we've got I it. Don't know, I don't know. <laughs> we I, don't. I don't know if you need um, a, a visa to get back in South Africa for your liver because I, I might do. My, I think my liver by the end of this um, eight weeks is going to look like Quacha Smith's nose, which is not a pretty <laughs> sight. But guys, I'm a massive fan. I've always been. I can't wait to watch this rugby. Hi everybody. Hope you're enjoying the Box Office podcast. Click on the link below for a 10% discount. Back to the pod. Box office, we're going to pick our Fantasy 15, which you can Are do we? online on the... Yes, do you know? Have you, you haven't picked yours yet? No. Nah. Nah, Fantasy 15. Why didn't you, why didn't you provide the questions to us before and so we could prep? <laughs> you don't need, you're, you're a natural, John. Thank you. You're a natural. You've done well. Thank you. But I asked for your big matchups. You mentioned the whole Scot Scotland and Springbok team. Because... Yeah. You couldn't answer who you want to face. You spoke about the front row, which you're not yeah. allowed to do as a centre. You're not okay. allowed to do that ever. But um, otherwise, you've done well. For the, first episode. for the first episode, I think you've done well. Thank you. So it's box office. We're going to pick our Fantasy 15. You can do it on the website, World Rugby website. Very easy. I actually picked one. I was trying to pick one on the car on the way here. Yeah. Not sure of hookers. Quite expensive. Yeah. So at what position did you play? Hooker. Yeah. No, I mean, hookers are pretty expensive, let's be honest. Very expensive. So Malcolm Marks, I think he's 10. Exactly. I, I would have paid more for him. Johnny Sexton, 13. That's very expensive. Top value. Yeah. Charlie Farmer Wiener, three and a half. He's my tight head. Oh, that's, that's a, a good buy. That's a, good, a very buy. good buy. That's a very good buy. So, okay, so uh, good uh, buy. What, is, what, so is, what will uh, Frank so Malarba be, Wiener? I think he's an eight, eight, eight and a half. Okay. So are we like actually picking out? Yeah, we're going to pick one. So okay. people can compete against us. Just download okay. it. Have we got a budget here? Is no, it's this 100. a hundred. Like, the value is a hundred. Okay. Then you pick a team, you know, yeah. you... So you go through that, but I'm stuck at, I think I'm stuck at the centers. I'll help you with that. Yeah, you can help me with that. Thicker toe, Tonga. Thicker toe for Tonga, Good okay. There. I think, I think Outside John, John already mentioned him. You've got to go for like semi red Radra in that Yeah, time. but surely he's expensive. He, yeah, he'll Is be he expensive. expensive. Yeah, he'll be expensive. Yeah. So are we doing that now? Or what, what? We're going to do it after this. Okay. But you can just look at the, the name is Box Office. And anybody who wants to join can compete against us and we'll see how we'll do by the end of the World Cup. But if I've already, given, doing, I've already given away too much. <laughs> if we're not doing I think well, I've we're blaming Shimmy, obviously. He's picking the, he's the main selector here. Yeah. yeah. You're like so the convener. I'm You're the convener that. of... Well, I've kept you two guys in control, I think. Yeah. I have. Okay. But outside of this, guys, other teams you're looking at. Got Danger a, teams. You know, you played 2007. You, there's always a team you're looking yeah. over the wall to see, okay, what's happening that side? What's happening that side? Uh, I mean, it's... 
France, you, okay, let's. France have got to be. And if you look at their record at home, what they've achieved. We haven't mentioned Ireland. Yeah. Yes. They're in our pool, they're a great side. Very and tough. They've had the wood on the All Blacks for the last four four years. Experienced side, um, super successful, um, well coached. And they play a unique style where everything is what they do on the ball, when they've got the ball. Everything yeah. they do is to kick the ball back, to, to retain position, and then go score a try. So nice to watch them because so many teams, the easiest things to come right is the mechanical stuff. So it's the kicking, the scrum, the more uh, stuff that we are good at as South Africans. What they do right is how quickly they set up an attack, their options. Um, so for me, they're a great side to watch. So and Island, we Island's, the one, Island's the one we should be watching out for. Look, Rugby World Cup's not been their strong suit. You know, yeah. they seem to peak a year before and then you know, they've never made it into a semi. You know, they've never been in a semi-final World Cup and they've got a tough pool. Um, and it'll be interesting for us, you know, if we get a result against Scotland, how we go against Ireland. Because I don't think it has okay. got a bearing where we finish first or second on okay, our Okay, we've jumped. We're talking Scotland now, but just quickly, the way Ireland play, the style of rugby, mm. is it good for World Cup right, to win your World Cup? It's a sexy thing. It's sexy. It's, it's beautiful yeah, it's, to watch. It's great to watch. And we see it with Leinster in the URC all the time. I think, well, only time will tell. You know, if you if you have weather like this and you can get that game going, it's a very, very difficult uh, uh, game game to stop. Um, you know, I suppose the pressure, uh, and it changes a bit when the conditions change, uh, and also the opposition. So when you are more under pressure, when you are being forced to make decisions, you know, how do you hold up up to that? So... Plus, you know, we spoke about the pressure earlier. Yeah. You haven't gone He's to a semi. pressure you, in the World Cup. Scala, you mentioned um, it. You run a bit But that's the thing. So, so we need to ask the question, yeah. are the Irish team good enough to win the World Cup? And my answer is yes. Sure. Uh, but so, so you could say the same about South Africa and right. France and New Zealand. Zealand. Probably, you know, I'd be extremely surprised if the winner does not come from those four. Then you have other teams that could be good enough on the day to beat any of the other top yeah. teams. And then you talk about Scotland, you... You know, Australia and England, you just also, don't know at the moment. Fiji, look, possibly. You've got to look at the draw. You know, we've got so many of the top sides stacked on the one side of the draw. You can walk across the other side, England, Argentina and, and the Wallabies potentially can ease their way into a semi-final quite easily. Argentina. Argentina. So Czech has done a great job there. And then, then you get to a semi-final. You, I mean, there's a risk that, you know, our sides can get through that quarterfinal, but they're going to be battered and bruised from our pools, from our quarterfinals. And you can pick up a, a shock result and all of a sudden you find yourself in a final. So um, it's so hard to say, you know, who's going to, you know, the quarterfinal weekend is, is massive for everyone on our side of the pool. But still, we've got to get through this first game and that's Scotland. Let's get through this first episode of Box Office. Next week, um, we can be answering some fans' questions. They can ask Send through the questions, and yeah, I won't be answering all the questions. The fans can get engaged, get on top of it. Who's on the show? Who's on the show next week? I'll be on the show. That's the most important one. Okay. Yeah, you'll be back, I'm, Sean. I'm, I'm back. I'm yeah. also back. Skull will be back. Yeah. I don't know who else, eh? We'll invite. I'm just worried about your liver, Skulk. No, no, I'll be fine. Will you? Will I'll, you make it back? I'll, I'll be fine. I might have to get a wider chair. <laughs> and and where? Yeah, I, I, I can talk on that one. Yeah. By by episode eight, I'm not sure if you'll fit into that chair. <laughs> I'll put gym tiger. partners. <laughs> Didn't we gym well together yesterday? Yeah, no, we did. I take that back. Uh -huh. I will edit it out. Even well, though Jean de Villiers, you enjoy you, you well, you invented another push up, the half push up. I've never seen that. What do you mean? You got to go all the way down and all the way back up. Oh well. <laughs> Do you do it <laughs> when your stomach touches? When your stomach touches, my, my, my chest gets in the way. Your chest can't get there. I'm doing arm because your stomach is as embarrassing as a forward. Yeah. You know, or 18s. But you're good you at that. Go a bit heavier. You're good at that. What? Embarrassing yourself. No, no, no. I'm more I'm worried about his <laughs> about his liver. Anyway, so next week we'll be taking some um, some questions from the fans. Get involved. We've got to get that fantasy 15 going. The group is called Box Office. We'll pick our own team and we'll see how we go against. Everyone around the world, everyone that's listening around you. But guys, looking forward to this weekend. It should be Lekka. a blockbuster weekend. The box, actually last one, score. We didn't talk about the box score. We all think they're going to win. But just give me a score, quickly. Oh, I'm going to go 35-18. 35-18, Skulk? It's 35-18. Yeah. Okay, that's big. Yeah, I, I've got to... But it'll definitely I, be a mauling try. I, I, th I, th I think something similar, because I, I think... With Finn Russell there, they're going to be able to put us under pressure every now and then. 
Um, but I just see our pack too strong this weekend. And we're going to have score. You know, yeah. I'm going to go 28 15 to the box. We'll get a bonus point. It's on record. So we'll come back next week and we'll see who was wrong, who was right. 35 18 and? 28 15. 28 15. And yours? I'll go box 32 20. Okay, tight. 32 20. It's going to be a good one. Enjoy the weekend, gentlemen, and we'll catch up next weekend. Thanks, Pick your Jim. Fantasy 15, and we'll catch up next week. Throw these boys some questions, some really hard ones. We Nice listening to Jean stutter about who he's scared to face. But it's going to be a good show next weekend. We'll catch up for the next one.